Now you can see from the title of, uh, of this presentation that a large part of that focus is on leadership. And I'm sure many of you have read any number of books about leadership. And in the last 50 years, I'd be willing to bet there are thousands of books that have been written about leadership. What is really notable about that is how little of that space is dedicated towards leading others to being creative. And if you think about it for a moment, it may not be that hard to really understand why that might be the case. First, the prime directive for organizations uh, operationally is to be efficient. Efficiency means doing the same thing the same ways again and again so that we can generate economies of scale, so that we can reduce costs, so that we can do things that are going to boost our profit margins, make us more competitive. Creativity really is, in the short run, the enemy of efficiency. Because being creative means that you're doing something new and you don't know how to get from here to there. By definition, being creative means being novel and original. That means you're not sure how you're going to get there, and you're often not sure how long you're going to get there and what it's going to take you to get there. It is very much something that is not efficient in the short run, although I think we understand that being innovative then generates new efficiencies later when our organizations can reposition products, can enter new markets, can tap into uh, new market segments and do things that we haven't been doing before. But when we're focused on short-term results, uh, then obviously we're not going to think that much about being creative. Another reason why we don't see much emphasis on leading for creativity really has to do with the myth that only some people can be creative. If that's true, then creativity is something that comes from within you. And if you really believe that, then you're not going to bother in the workplace to try to develop creativity. If you want it in your workforce, you would hire for it. You would find some kind of selection devices and you would go out and select for that. Now, like a lot of myths, this one is dangerous because there is some truth to that. People are different in their level of innate creativity, in their natural propensity to want to be creative and how comfortable they are with it and what kinds of personal skills they bring to it. Uh, but there's a lot more to the story than that. And in fact, that idea is one of the reasons I became involved in this area in the first place. Uh, I was talking to that colleague, Pam Tierney, many years ago, and she was talking about some work she was thinking of doing in creativity, and I got to thinking about how I felt like I was really an uncreative person. I never felt like I had a creative bone in my body, and I hope that, that uh, all of you don't quite feel that way. And, it, and I became very interested in, well, what is it that really would, would be required to generate creativity and to do it at work consistently. And as small things sometimes grow into larger ones, uh, this really became a consuming passion for me for uh, over a decade. So what I'm gonna do uh, in this talk is describe to you kind of a model that, that, that walks through what we have learned about building a creative workforce and about leading others into creativity uh, in different workplaces.